Perfect. Hi, um, and I'm here with Susan Campbell, who's in um, British Columbia, British Columbia in um, Canada. And uh, Susan is a, um, a registered nurse, PhD, IBCLC, and um, she's uh, very well known in our field of lactation. She's written a book which will be published in January, and it is called Lactation: A Foundational Strategy for Health Promotion. So, Susan. So then from, from where you've come from, I know this is a brilliant title of a book, but t let's go back a little bit. Tell me a bit about where you've come from um, you know, that brought you to the, to, the, to, the, brought you to the stage where you really feel this is an important um, topic to bring forward in a book. Tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> And Carol, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and we've just had a lively conversation. <laughs> we have. There, my background starting in biology and pre-med uh, led me to uh, a colleague and advisor saying, have you ever thought about midwifery and nursing and meeting nursing faculty at the University of Connecticut who were nurse practitioners who were PhD prepared, who had a concept of nursing practice that I had never been exposed to yeah. before. And I essentially never looked back. Um, so we have practice in obstetrics and, you know, initially high risk obstetrics, but found my way into public health and lactation. And I shared that my third year of nursing school, I had just signed up and went to a La Leche League conference. And was surrounded by mothers and babies and healthy and pregnant women and doulas and midwives and this world I'd never known before. Um, that really started my interest in, but even in the obstetric unit I worked on, my colleagues and I were very supportive of breastfeeding. So it was the beginning learning components. Fast forward to having my own children, becoming a La Leche League leader, and unlearning all of the biomedical, patriarchal, hierarchical perspective of childbirth and women's health um, led me really to perceive uh, lactation as a public health concern. So I have to say the impetus for this book uh, really probably started way back when, but three years ago, teaching a health promotion course for nurse practitioner students at the University of British Columbia, I realized lactation was nowhere. It was yeah. in none of the articles, mm -hmm. none of the books we used, nobody mentioned it. By that point in time, the 2016 Lancet series had come out. Mm -hmm. So we knew not just global ramifications, but all of the health and economic benefits of. Mm -hmm. And I had a lactation research team at the time. We were looking at simulation and how do we teach lactation in the healthcare professions at UBC. And we decided to start discussing this book. Okay, we well. finished the core curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yes. We were at the ILCA conference with Teresa. Yes. From Jones Bartlett learning. Yes. And she said, So, Suzanne, do you want to edit another book? <laughs> My simulation texts are done. This is done. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> and it, it melded together. I really thought that I would just be editing it, you know, maybe writing an introduction. And it's mm -hmm. turned out that I have authored five of the 15 chapters. Wow. I brought colleagues from all over, I, heavy Canadian representation, but international yeah. as well, and had proofreaders from other areas. So like the core curriculum, focused on that trauma-informed, um, gender-inclusive yes. voice and a very broad perspective of lactation mm -hmm. as health promotion. Okay. So very interdisciplinary. And interdisciplinary. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's really. Physiotherapy, yeah. um, lots of colleagues. Yeah. Yeah, and that is so important because we are um, uh, we forget that lactation um, doesn't just fit into one hat. It is part of everyday life um, and touches every every aspect. If we look at it, um, you know, from around from from birth, but it, it touches economy, it touches um, health, um, it touches touches the environment. It uh, basically 
um, finance everything within our you know um, in our daily lives it is part of so it's a really crucial part um, so if I look at it so you're um, you're looking at um, you know at lactation as a, um, a strategy for health promotion so um, I read a little bit of an introduction um, to your book, and it talks about that it's a very evidence-based um, no research that's meant to help uh, lactation consultants and other public health professionals. Um, so how do you see, um, like this is a brilliant book there, what would be the message um, that's in your book that you really want to get across to people um, uh, from our, interdiscipline, our interdisciplinary um, uh, perspective uh, that would, perhaps make a difference in the world related to, um, to infant feeding and general health. <laughs> well, well, and, and thank you. So I'm going to summarize in two seconds why yeah. this book is important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> while, while I, while I uh, holler at my husband, we're recording up here. Could you be quiet now? <laughs> we're all living in this, you know, virtual world. We are, yes. Um, the nutshell for it really is first of all, to recognize that that basis of lactation, it is, it is it, so there are a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. that sense that breastfeeding equals good parenting or poor parenting. You know, if you don't breastfeed, I try to focus on infant feeding decision-making mm -hmm. and how as healthcare professionals and society, we all have a responsibility to support our new parents. Mm -hmm. It is a very stressful time having babies, especially amid this COVID pandemic. Yes. Yeah. And parents need our support. They don't need our judgment. They don't need our negative stories. I think where I was most shocked too with my graduate students is that when I asked them to reflect on their own experiences mm -hmm. with infant feeding, they found they received no support. It was assumed that they were a doctor or a nurse or mm -hmm. a midwife. So they'd gotten the instruction in school and they knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so those misconceptions. So I have focused the book more at health professionals mm -hmm. alone, um, to recognize the foundational skills necessary. So we have some components in there about general communication and how you might problem solve. But I really have focused too on the broader international um, components that contribute to respectful care mm -hmm. of our parents, yeah. new parents. And yeah. I'm, I'm saying parents globally, we yeah. talk mothers, babies, but yeah. we know other people are chest and breast feeding. Breast feeding yes. Um, and that it really it is a, a in the ideal, it is a dyad, regardless of how families look, it is yeah. a dyad that provides support to this new life and that the support system to the breast chest feeding mm -hmm. person is key. Yeah. Um, but really helping uh, healthcare professionals see their role, that you know, it isn't to judge, it is to provide support, to have the foundational skills, and then how we are stronger together yes. as healthcare professionals yes. and yeah. by sharing our knowledge and expertise mm -hmm. we really can be helping these new parents in their infant feeding decision making so so much of it is about language and about yes. how we situate things and i have erred on the side of you know um being so adamant about how important breastfeeding is and mm -hmm. lactation is mm -hmm. That I worry about offending and creating the mommy wars and mm -hmm. coming across as judgmental. And when a person says to me in sadness, they did not meet their goals, whether that was for the type of delivery they had hoped yeah. for or their infant feeding uh, experience, I don't get mad at them or judge them. I get mad at the system. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yeah. that area that we're not supporting them the way they need to be supported. Yeah, I think um, we so often hear the the phrase like you know protect, promote, and support breastfeeding um, from the unintended decoration, and um, you know going back through this, and all the way along we have forgotten um, the, the 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 third um, portion of this jigsaw, um, and um, it is it is probably the most important 
And I've seen that endlessly, specifically through this period of time with COVID. Um, you know, being, being available simply um, for somebody if they message you and you know, they just wanna know, is everything okay? Is everything, you know, listen, my, you know, my baby's um, you know, peeing and pooing, what's going on here? What's normal? Um, what? And if we don't have available those services and or if people are are misinformed as health professionals and are giving um, the poor information, we're leading on um, to actually long term um, health um, uh, health issues. And we're not realizing as health professionals how that can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, when we talk about the importance um, of, you know, these the, you, you're saying your um, graduate students, um, I can tell you that over and over again, um, that, that the belief, um, you know, even if you're an IBCLC and you gave birth, people have taken on your title rather than, I'm actually right now a birthing parent who's going through experiences and I, you know, I might have all the knowledge here, but right now that's not where my, my being is. I need to be nurtured and I need to be loved and I need to be able to feel that I'm, I am welcomed. And then I will have that connection with my, my, my infant as well. Um, so anybody that's working with families, we need to remember that, you know, we can have lots of knowledge elsewhere, but doesn't mean that we're an expert at this very baby that's just arrived. And um, his individual, every exactly they did it before doesn't mean that with this new infant, it's going to be the same. Yeah, exactly. And I see that over and over in my in my practice. Um, and you you have to learn simply to be present. Exactly. And so. I my comment would often be is that it's not the, um, the it's not the ever the parent that can feel guilty. It is always it always has to be our system and us to take as health professionals to take on a responsibility to make a difference in the world. We're the ones that can make the change. So exactly. if there's any extra well, sharing, there is, you know, as you were talking, I thought about some of the key components of the book that I think will be very helpful. Yeah, I. I do love my theory and, you know, um, you know, there is a chapter looking at theory of planned behavior and self-efficacy because yes. those are two areas. And so what you were describing in support of the parents, where they're at and their experience is all about self-efficacy yeah. and building their knowledge and skills and their attitude and how to respond to people and what to do. Um, there's also some components around technology and, mm -hmm. and how new mothers are using technology. Um, emergency preparedness, mm -hmm. global perspectives yes. of CFHI and where it's come. So the chapters are really meant to be foundational. They're meant to be interdisciplinary mm -hmm. and to get us all on one level. Now, the um, the hope, because my my dream is that uh, lactation is foundational to every healthcare professional education. Yes. Actually, every education, you know, every human being and citizen of the planet should have yes. something about lactation. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's a broad goal. But <laughs> research team at UBC has developed um, open access and open educational resources mm -hmm for lactation foundation. It, it was targeted initially at health care professionals, but I do believe that parents would find it useful mm -hmm. as well. So the anatomy and physiology one we had put out in January, mm -hmm. we're using it with students in classes and building around it. We have four other scenarios that are going to launch very soon. I'm hoping for Wonderful. early next week. Um, and again, they are beginning tools. They are animated, they're depicting uh, generic practitioners. Mm -hmm. So if they're used with doctors, nurses, midwives, social workers, whoever wants to use them in conversation with new parents around prenatal care, so preparation mm -hmm. for breastfeeding and best practices, um, around a C-section delivery and how that could be supported to make it more successful around two or three days when sore nipples and pains and questions like you were saying, peace yes. and comes yes. up. And then around two weeks with a borderline not getting enough. I hate okay. to say failure to thrive yes. because that's yeah. a diagnosis, but yes. that component. 
And in all of these, there are red flags, there are attachments. We, we threaded the BFHI throughout them Good. all. Good. And, yes. and have links for students to go and look, parents as well. Wow. But we're really excited. We never anticipated they were going to be out there for individual learning. And you do these five modules and you know it. Yeah. They're meant to be a pre-brief. Yes, and yes. What we're, what we're doing at UBC is bringing these healthcare professional students together, theoretically live in a simulation lab, but yes. as that didn't work with COVID in the spring, we actually brought them into a virtual telehealth simulation. Wow. To unpack, meet with a standardized patient and have that experience. So I'm all about education yes. and how we brought in what we're doing. To me, the text could be a good foundation for any healthcare professional program, anyone introducing health promotion as a side area, and definitely for our IBCLC mm -hmm. programs and preparations, that it would be a very useful tool. I hope that I've captured the global component of yes. it. Um, the interprofessional component of it and that will people will find it educational and you know assisting their own practice as well i really look forward to getting an opportunity to reading this <laughs> i think it's going to be great there's a i've got a lot of projects coming up in the in next year and i think this is actually something that will be very well uh, welcomed um into one of the projects that i'm working with right now so um you know, and carol you know as a, a newer book author editor kind of tied into it kicking and screaming like <laughs> i know it's not perfect you need to let it go at some point yeah. but i'm really excited because like with my simulation text, once it gets out there, I yes. will have people contacting me. I mean, the reason yes. I ended up writing so many chapters was because people that I approached were kind of nervous or yes. something happened with the time frame. Um, but in general, I've always mentored new authors for my yes. books. Yes. Yeah. I think really important. So you will see a heavy practitioner based. Yeah component yeah. so academically you know wherever it ends up but these are real people with real stories with clinical expertise that should be valuable for the audience and that is exactly what we need <laughs> so, <laughs> yes so much so you know um i want to thank you so much for spending this time with me it's been wonderful catching up i you know it's <laughs> i hope eventually we'll get to see each other again in person you know, um, you know it will get there it's a matter of time so, we need to keep calm keep safe keep kind well, my, I have a little thing behind me that says, just keep calm and educate. <laughs> that's what just keeps me going and that's how I work my days. Okay, so thank you so much for everything that you do. And again, it's been an honor and I really look forward to reading your book. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thanks for this opportunity. Okay, thanks again.